And we're joined now by Fred Maxick, who helped design and engineer the new New Year's Eve ball for Times Square. He is the founder and chief techno technology officer of Lighting Science Group. He joins us from Orlando, Florida. Fred, thanks for joining us. Uh, let me ask you about this. I mean, are we going to start see start to see many more things switched out? I mean, will the pace be rapid, uh, the, the switching from incandescent bulbs to LED? Oh, I think that's for certain. The uh, the pace and the rate of change towards LED, the, the economics around LED, the economics of how we decide to install light in the future is all changing. Um, just last year, the prices of LED were 40 or 50 percent higher than they are today and you're seeing many many major retailers like Home Depot go out and devote a lot of time and space and energy and effort to educate the public on how, what LED is all about and how much they can save in a, even in the short term. Uh, certainly in the uh, commercial markets retailers are getting it right away. Some people are already seeing a return inside the same year they buy the light bulb for the energy savings on it. So, so the, but the prices are not yet below those of incandescent bulbs I take it. No, not yet. Not yet. You have to look at the energy savings. You have to sometimes look at the replacement costs or the maintenance savings. But the, uh, they're certainly coming down significantly, and they're getting much more competitive. And we no longer have to compromise the quality of light uh, to get that type of energy savings. Well, you know, the, uh, the use on the New Year's Eve ball makes a lot of sense. And people who, you know, people my age who think of LEDs as these uh, red lights that are on, for example, calculators get that. But uh, what about in beams? I mean, can you use LEDs as headlights in cars? Well, there's certainly a lot of work going on around that. The, the fact is that LEDs are very controllable. We can create optics that can make them very, very tight beams, and many lasers are actually used LEDs as sources inside lasers. So, yes, there is, there's a lot of work on that. There's a lot of work even using LEDs for things like street lighting today. Uh, they're just the, the most efficient source around, and they're just getting better uh, as time goes on. What about... Uh the sort of ambiance of the light it provides. You know, um, halogen lights have been used for years in office buildings. People don't like them uh, compared to incandescent bulbs. Will that be the case as well if we switched over to LEDs in the office? No, you're going to have your choice with LEDs. LEDs can make up pretty much any color temperature you might like, which will give you the ambient setting you want. They could also be adjustable in terms of what their CRI or color rendering index is. It's how we perceive color under it. So if you'd like a nice warm white light at your home, uh, in your living room before you go to bed, that'll be available to you with LEDs. Or if you want a very, very crisp blue light to work by, that will also be available to you with LEDs. We're, we're, it's a very, very flexible format and the, the ability to manipulate the color spectrum to manipulate the color temperature is fairly readily uh, addressed within LEDs. Do you forecast? It's not a single emitter source. Fred, do you forecast? I mean, TVs are the first uh, place that you sort of commercially saw LEDs uh, touted as the chosen light source in, 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 a, in a product uh, that was large and big ticket like that. Do you see them taking over televisions, or will another light source surpass LEDs as a, a television projector? Well, I think we always have to be conscious that there are other sources available. So in a, in a television projector, or not really projector, but for backlighting, uh, OLEDs are also a very effective manner. And I think you'll see some folks move to OLEDs as well. They're a good planar source, but not necessarily as efficient as LEDs are right now. Now, what's the difference between an OLED and an LED for those of us who don't do this for a living? <laughs> <laughs> not, not to get too technical, but it's, it's all about how they're constructed. It's all, it's all about how they're put together. Uh, the LED ha is deposited certain ways. O OLEDs allow themselves to be manufactured in a completely different methodology. But it's all about essentially creating a, a junction and allowing an, an electron to pass through that junction and, and emit a photon. And yeah. I'll be laughed at by my family for mentioning photons. Well, uh, but OLEDs will be, uh, OLED displays will be flexible, right? We'll be able to bend and roll them. They, they certainly have that, that ability. There's been some demonstrations of OLEDs that can do that. And um, there are also some that are, that are not flexible, and they're, they're done in, in sheets, and sort of like uh, some of the old plasmas were done in fairly rigid sheets. All right, it's very interesting stuff. We could go on, obviously, forever. Uh, I find it at least very interesting. Fred, thanks so much for joining us. Fred Maxick there, founder and chief technology officer of Lighting Science Group.